Welcome back everybody to How to Become a Freelancer in 30 Days. This is Anthony Chatfield, and today we're going to be talking about how to start bidding on freelance work for the first time. Uh, the goal being to start the process of getting your name out there, of seeing what kinds of projects are available, and hopefully landing your first project. Alright, so the goals today, what I want you to take away from this. Uh, I want to talk about how to bid on freelance projects on sites like Elance, and we'll use Elance in particular, but there are a lot of sites that are like this. Uh, I want you to get comfortable selling your expertise, and I want you to create a formula or a format you can quickly replicate in your bids. Uh, this is not going to be something you copy paste, but it's going to be something you'll be able to write quickly because you've done something similar many, many times before. Um, and then ideally, after doing all of this, we will find the project that kicks off your freelance career. All right, so from the beginning, how to write killer bids. Uh, a lot of rules here, a lot of things to keep in mind, but here are a few of the most important. First, don't use a form bid. This basically means something that you would copy and paste. Think of your cover letter when you're applying for a job you really want. You don't want to use a blanket cover letter where you talk about your skills and don't actually talk about the job to which you're applying. So you want to be as specific as possible. You want to show your expertise, don't describe it. So talk about specific projects you've done. Attach samples, always, always, always attach samples. Don't direct somebody to your portfolio. Send them direct samples that are applicable to the job you're talking about. If you don't have any, I'll show you tomorrow and the next day how to start creating those. Personalize your bid as much as possible. So talk about their company, show that you've done your research, talk about how you are a good fit for what they are looking for. Basically, you wanna make sure they understand you read this and they can tell immediately that it's just not somebody going through and copy pasting the same bid over and over and over again. Uh, the more personalized it is, the more you'll resonate with that person and the easier it is to pick up that job. You wanna provide a detailed rate and time frame for delivery. Elance gives you a place where you can put in your earnings and the turnaround time, but I also like to include a more detailed breakdown within the bid itself. So tell them how much time you need to complete the project, how much money you need to make while working on the project, and any other details, such as how many you can do per week, what your availability is, whether you'll work on the weekend. Uh, basically break down for them exactly how you'll approach this job, how much will get done and by when, and what you're gonna charge for that. And then finally, always provide standalone samples to back your claims. Again, this is super, super important. It's one of the few things that people use as an automatic no. Um, I can tell you when I post projects to Elance, if they don't include a sample, I immediately delete it because I don't wanna go digging. It's, it's a sign that they're serious. All right, so now let's start bidding on some projects. All right, so let's talk about how success rates might change over time. There are a lot of things to keep in mind here. Uh, for example, in my first year doing this, I landed about 10% of the projects I bid on. Um, for me, there was two reasons for that. First, it was a lack of understanding of what I should be bidding on. Uh, second, however, it was uh, not quite having that reputation yet. People don't know who I am. They haven't seen the work I've done. I don't have a portfolio necessarily for that particular type of project. Um, this is something that'll change with time. So I wouldn't expect a high, high return rate on your bids right away. But keep in mind that there's always someone out there looking for someone like you. There's The volume is so high that you'll be able to crack through no matter what particular barrier might be in the way for a lot of those projects. By year two, I had tripled my win rate and was getting about 35% of those projects. Um, people knew who I was. I had good feedback. I had not raised my rates very much, and I was getting a lot of projects. Um, by the last year of freelancing, which was year four in comparison, I was only getting 15% of my projects, but I was charging about four times more than I had when I started, and my repeat client rate was about half. So, uh, the result of which being I made a lot more money, had to do a lot less bidding, and had a lot more projects just coming my way without actually having to do anything for them. All right, so when it comes time to actually bidding, uh, the five things you need to avoid doing. First off, don't copy paste an old bid, even if it's one that won you a project. Uh, there's no general way to win a project. It's all specific to that client and that project. So copying and pasting another one will have no impact on the current one. Uh, don't ask for a cost range before providing your bid. 
be confident in what you charge and be willing to tell them what it is. If you leave it not provided or ask them to give a range of their budget, um, they'll probably ignore it. Now, some companies have a budget and asking that is fair, but most of the time they don't. If they haven't written it, they don't have a specific number in mind. All right. Don't apologize for a lack of experience or industry knowledge. Uh, it's good to admit it if they ask you, but always show what you do know. Be positive. Always think positively about what you are good at. Talk about what you have done for people, what the results of those actions were. Uh, if you wrote a blog post that got a thousand views or a thousand shares, tell them that, even if it has nothing to do with this particular project. That kind of proof is what's going to want make them want to hire you. All right. Uh, proofread your bids many, many times over. Even a small typo, especially if you're in the writing category, will lose you that project almost immediately. And then don't bid outside of your areas of expertise, at least to start. Start in the areas you know, uh, build up a reputation there, and then grow from there. A couple things to keep in mind here. First off, in the general categories, Elance is going to charge you more money if you want to bid on different types of projects. So if you are a designer and a developer and a writer, um, first off, good on you because that's hard to do. Um, second off, that's three separate categories on Elance, and you're going to get charged for two of those. Uh, the first one being free. So pick one that you're the most have the most strength in and focus all of your energies there first because that's where you're going to get the most results. All right. So to wrap up today, I want you to go to Elance or Odesk or whatever you signed up for and bid on at least five projects. Uh, whether you feel you're a good fit for them or not, just start to get the feel for it. See how much time it takes. See what you have to create for them. Um, and then don't worry about if you get the project or not. Just get in there and start bidding. Take notes of how each bid goes and what you needed to provide. Um, and then at the end, too, you can mark whether or not you got feedback. A lot of the times you won't land a project even if the client contacts you and asks questions. But them asking you questions means you've been shortlisted. And it's worth taking a note of because it means that bid worked. Um, losing a project doesn't mean you had a bad bid. It just means someone else had a better bid. So again, think positively. Think that you know you got closer and you can learn from that experience. Create a spreadsheet of those bids with the dates and the amounts so that you can go back and track it. And then make a note of the types of projects you skip when bidding. Um, this is gonna help you narrow down the field significantly in the future when you bid. You can filter those search results and remove things like hourly projects, um, anything that's outside the country, anything that's been on the site for more than a week, um, anything with a budget below a certain amount. There's a lot of ways to filter projects out so if you start paying attention now to what you do want and what you don't, you can make the search a lot faster instead of having to go through all 100,000 projects every time you start looking. All right, so that's everything for today. I want you to uh, complete each of these actions, and we'll be back tomorrow. Um, real quick before we go, though, of course, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, any additional details or feedback on what we talked about today. And please, please, please rate this uh, course and share with everybody your thoughts thus far. Um, this is Anthony, and I will talk to you tomorrow.